My name's Ian Osborne. I um, am a director of government and cloud uh, for the ICT Knowledge Transfer Network in the UK, funded by the UK Government Agency, but I also work for Intellect, the UK Trade Association, where I'm responsible for business to business and services that the industry provides there. So what brings you here to uh, Cloudscape? Well, I've been a, five, you know, I'm a Cloudscape 5 because I was a member of the Programme Committee and you're sort of obliged to turn up if you're a member of the Programme Committee. Uh, and I helped put together the session we've just done on, on Government Cloud. Okay, so I remember you said uh, the session yesterday, you made a comment um, when you were sitting in the audience about um, how the People often look at cloud as though it's one thing, but actually it's a very diverse range of different services that are marketed in and, and run in completely different ways. So what do you think needs to be done to communicate this diversity uh, and also make it appealing to the customer? Well, it's interesting. I, we're still in the early days of cloud computing. I mean, I, this is a concept that, I mean, this is the fifth Cloudscape conference. At the first one, five years ago, we were introducing the idea of cloud. Um, the idea was we have a distributed, distributed computing infrastructure and we will build services on top of it and that the interface of those services would be very simple. You run a virtual machine, you load a, some data and operate on that. Um, so cloud in five years has gone from perhaps being a little, just nothing more than hype, vaporware, to a huge amount of substance and momentum in the market. Now what inevitably goes with that change is that everyone puts their spin on what it means and, and that has literally confused the marketplace. Um, so people tend to come back to the basics of cloud being platform infrastructure um, or software as a service uh, without defining what any of those things really mean. So th there's a little bit of let's agree to talk about the same concepts in the same way and there's a little bit more consistency required and I think some of the standards work we're trying to do ought to bring some help, some shape to that. So, I mean, you mentioned standards. Um, standards are uh, something um, that um, businesses can, can you know, move to, to, to standards if it affects their bottom line. Um, scientists might find it, uh, might have their own way of doing things, so how do you move the research domain towards uh, well, I worked for Open Grid Forum for a while, um, and I have to say, standards do nothing for an end user. It's the services that embody the standards that matter. So, standards help. Actually, standards raise the level of water in the harbour. They float every boat in the harbour if you get the standards right. The example given this morning was, you know, let, rather than continue to define very small parts of infrastructure to be unique, why not build your software to work on a common infrastructure and therefore concentrate on the task of the algorithm and the software and not on building an infrastructure. So standards raise the level of, of, of innovation by removing uh, wasted innovation. You know, an in innovation deficit comes in when you start doing something else is already done. In the science community, I, I think we've seen a fair amount of this in the grid world. Um, people want to build their own rather than actually just use the one that exists. Um, sometimes they object to it because perhaps it's a, a big service provider not based in their country. But usually it's because they want to build one themselves. Now I have to say, if that's what you want to do, get into the IT industry and build services. Don't be in the science community to do it. I'd like to see scientists doing science and having the appropriate support rather than the infrastructure, building infrastructure on which they could do science. Well, it certainly makes sense. Um, were any projects uh, or um, new initiatives that you've come across uh, at this Cloudscape that you might highlight? I, I've been a little guiltily bad about not looking at all the projects here. The one or two projects I've looked at that made no sense to me at all, but I'll not embarrass them by discussing that. Um, I am always interested in hearing more about um, people bringing new components into the picture. I mean, components of infrastructure or services that people can build on. I'm much less interested in people talking about they've built a different version of something that already exists. Um, there is already a gap quite a big gap between what industry is actually delivering, what people think they're building and what Sanders is talking about. And that gap is seven years long probably. I mean, it, and it's getting longer because the, the innovation rate, the internet speed is already twice the speed that it was. But then the cloud innovation rate is even faster than that. And, and so three months now in an IT industry for a new project is a long time.
not three years. I mean, do you think with all this change that, that, you know, that trying to, uh, you know, does that conflict with the idea of trying to set, you know, settle on standards? Oh, it does, directly. I've been working on ISO and then ITU came into the framework, building a cloud reference architecture without anyone who's actually got one in the room, which is ridiculous. Um, and, and I don't mean to demean the work of ISO, because what we're trying to do really is document what's happened and then use that as a basis of moving on. And for a lot of people that matters, but the truth of the matter is the leaders in our industry are already years ahead. Um, and by the time we get there with the standard, they'll be further years ahead. Yeah. And I'm not quite, I'm not actually sure they're really not gaining on us all the time. So it's really tough to keep up. And, and de facto standards obviously have a lot oh, to play you see, in that situation. We've had de facto standards all along. I mean, at what point did someone decide that an accelerator's on the right and a, and a clutch is on the left and the brakes in the middle? You know, I can tell you that the turn of the 19th century, um, the cars being built in Coventry, of which there were 200, more than 200 car companies building cars, they didn't all have the same rules. <laughs> so if you got into a car, the first problem was, well, where are the, how are the controls working? You know, which foot is used for what? I mean, yeah. you know, so we're, we're, we're a bit better than that right now, but you know, it takes a while, it takes a while to settle down and accept. So the de facto standards play a huge role. I mean, whether we like it or not, the biggest player in the marketplace is going to define a standard for interface to infrastructure. There's no question. Actually, that's not the issue. The issue is the services they provide, the service level they provide. That's the challenge. You know, having an API is one thing. Delivering the service the way that's done is completely different. Okay. Well, thanks, Ian, for talking to me. And uh, do we expect to see you at Cloudscape 6? Cloudscape 6, well, maybe.